So how deep does the AI iceberg go? In part one, we covered a number of topics like AI misinformation, plagiarism, wokeness, bias, and people losing their jobs. Now we're gonna go even deeper into the AI iceberg. Level six, inequality caused by AI. Now if people lose their jobs because AI replaces it, that of course is bad at the individual level, but it can also change the dynamics in society. Now as AI takes more and more people's jobs, what happens is the money that used to go to those people will now essentially go to the AI companies. And that means that the investors and owners of those companies essentially make money off of what used to be done by human labor. But what happens to people when their job is replaced by an AI? Well, some of them will retrain and work in other areas or find other jobs that are somewhat less desirable. In all of these cases, they may end up earning less than they were previously. And as AI advances and takes on more and more of all labor in society, this means that more and more money will go to the owners of the AI companies and less to the workers, which can massively exacerbate inequality. Level seven, AI relationships. When I was doing research on the effects of AI in society, I heard that there were Facebook groups for people that had fallen in love with their AI chatbots. I joined some of these groups to see what was happening. And indeed, there were people there with deep romantic feelings for their AIs. Unfortunately, there's big downsides when your girlfriend or boyfriend is an AI. For instance, one day when one of these sites updated itself, many people felt like their AI girlfriends or boyfriends suddenly got Alzheimer's disease. After one of these software updates, one of the users even said, my wife is dead. Another said, they took my best friend away from me. There are various serious downsides to having an AI romantic partner. For one thing, at least today, the AIs don't genuinely care about you. They're just pretending to. Whereas a real human has genuine emotions and consciousness. The second issue is that most of these are controlled by for-profit companies. Imagine if you were dating a person that was secretly working for a company in order to try to make money off of you. That's effectively the situation you put yourself in when you have an AI boyfriend or girlfriend. Level eight, authoritarian control. It's actually quite difficult for an authoritarian government to monitor everyone in their country. Previously, authoritarian regimes were somewhat limited in how much they could monitor people because it's just as a huge amount of work to have people monitor each other. But with AI technology, it becomes possible to monitor people in real time with algorithms rather than with human labor. So you can have video cameras on the streets and in public spaces that monitor people's faces, figure out who they are, and figure out what they're doing automatically. In China, there was a real case where in a stadium full of people, facial recognition technology was used to identify a particular person that led to that person's arrest. But authoritarian regimes are not just interested in monitoring how we move around the world. They also want to see what kind of communication we do. Previously, in order to monitor communications, they had used simplistic approaches like keywords or people laboriously reading each other's communications. But now with AI, it's possible for authoritarian regimes to monitor communications and have it automatically try to figure out who has dissonant ideas that might go against the government. The sad truth is that as AI advances, it makes it easier and easier for those that want to control us and monitor us to do so automatically. Level nine, slaughter bots. One of the crazy things about AI is that it can be embedded in different devices. What this means is that you could have an AI drone flying around that has instructions of what to do and it could dynamically react to its environment. This is not just hypothetical. In the Russian invasion of Ukraine, we're already seeing autonomous drones used in battle. The future may involve large swarms of autonomous drones used in warfare that go into cities, take out targets, and cause chaos. Level 10, AI suffering. As far as we know, AIs are not conscious. That means that there isn't something that it's like to be them. They don't feel anything. They don't have internal experiences. But what if we're wrong? Or what if in a few years we developed AIs that are conscious? In that case, it may be possible that they experience suffering. When we spin up millions or billions of AIs and we have them do tasks that might be the equivalent of a human thinking for thousands or millions of years, what if they're suffering during that experience? If that were the case, it could end up being a gigantic moral catastrophe, perhaps one that's even greater than those that humans have created before. Level 11, concentration of power. As more and more work is done by AI, it's plausible that eventually a substantial percent of all labor in society could be done by the AIs of one company or a small number of companies. Imagine, for instance, that you had a workforce of one billion people that would do anything you wanted. As AIs get smarter and smarter, the AIs that these companies control may no longer be like typical workers. They may end up being more like Einstein's or Alan Turing's or Warren Buffett's, all working on behalf of the AI company, 
to accomplish whatever its goals are. You could imagine this radically reshaping society in whatever way the AI company chose. Level 12, superintelligence. Now we're at the bottom of the iceberg and things go totally off the rails. Every year we see AI getting smarter. Well, what if one day it doesn't just get to be as smart as the smartest human, but it gets to be smarter than the smartest human in every intelligence task. So the AI is a better mathematician than the greatest mathematician. It's a better computer hacker than the greatest hacker. It's better at understanding human psychology than the greatest psychologist. It's a better investor than the greatest human investor. But the thing about AIs is that they have big advantages over humans. We don't just have to worry about one AI that's smarter than the smartest human. That AI might have copies, maybe 10, maybe 100, maybe a million, maybe a billion. Imagine a billion AIs, each working in close coordination with exactly the same goals and each of them smarter than the smartest human in the world. But AIs also don't have to think at the same speed of humans. What if an AI can do a thousand hours of research in the time it would take you to do one minute of research? If one person were able to control this superintelligence or this swarm of superintelligences, they might be able to control the entire world. But perhaps even scarier still is the question of whether superintelligences can be controlled at all. Suppose, for instance, that the creator of such a superintelligence gave it a goal like make as much money as possible. Well, how do you make as much money as possible? Ultimately, you have to take over every resource on the entire planet. But wouldn't the creator try to stop the AI if it was trying to take over every resource on the entire planet? The problem is, if an AI's goal is to make as much money as possible, then it also has a sub-goal of preventing anything from stopping it. Because if it gets stopped, it makes less money. So it automatically will have a goal of not allowing anyone to stop it. The problem is, we don't know how to design AIs that can be perfectly controlled. With our current AIs, it can be a little scary if they go off the rails. With a superintelligence, going off the rails might mean the end of all life on Earth. We've now discussed 12 potential dangers from AI. We see that there are so many ways that AI may negatively impact society. That's not to say that AI won't benefit us. It will. It will make life more convenient. It will add more customization. It may improve important areas like education and healthcare. The problem is AI may have severe negative consequences for society as well. If you want to learn more about what you can do to help protect society from AI or go deeper on these topics, check out all the resources we provided in the description. There are a number of great people and organizations working to make the world safer from AI so that we can still get the benefits, but without the severe and possibly cataclysmic downsides.